If I know anything about Twitch live streams, they're going nuts right now, going like, muted, 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 not working, no, no, no. All right, we're good. Well, listen up, ding-dongs. We already figured it out. You just got to plug the thing into the thing. It just takes us a minute. We got it. All right. My name, I was saying, welcome, everybody. Welcome, gamers, to the George Clanton live stream, The Bowery Presents, uh, plus Twitch. We're here live right after the concert in the black room. I've got some questions from you, and I, I'm going to give you some answers. Here we go. The first question from Too Nice With It is, what's your go-to pre-show meal? Well, uh, Negative Gemini is an artist that I live with and I sleep with, and she's very important to me, and she has all sorts of dietary restrictions. And when you have that kind of a situation going on, you can't really decide what to eat. So you have to eat what they eat. And in my case, that means pad thai. We get Thai food. Thai food is gluten-free, vegan, tastes good, and it's available in every city. So my go-to meal is tofu pad thai. Thank you very much. Three Pomona Ramona three. What's your favorite candy? Oh dear. Uh, I have old man tastes. I like regular chocolate and stuff. So. Uh, my favorite candy, like when I'm going on tour, uh, can I? It's a name brand. I'll say a name brand right now. It's the uh, Five Bar. I forget who owns it. It's like Nestle or something. But they, ha it's got peanut butter, pretzel, chocolate, caramel. It's like the ultimate. Like it's just got everything in it. But it's, you know, it it tastes like something that you'd get at an old country fair. So that's that's what I get. It seems like real food. I'm um, pretty boring. I don't eat gummy worms. Um, gummy worms, they're all slippery in your mouth, so I don't do that. Thank you, Pomona Ramona. Crestati says, what's the environment that inspires you the most musically? That's an interesting question. Um, this environment, actually. Sometimes, you know, over the past couple of years, while this hasn't been going on, it's difficult to stir up the creative uh, flow and the energy because... You're in lockdown. Um, you know, the, the, the big secret to like music or any type of art or business or whatever is to surround yourself with people that are doing what you want to do. Um, so like just being in the tour van with Vitesse X and Negative Gemini and of course Magdalena Bay, especially Magdalena Bay because I don't, you know, I'm just getting to know them more and more this year. Uh, you know, that kind of thing is really inspiring. Um, so to, uh, you know, the tour van, being being at the shows and meeting everybody and having them say how much your music means to them, it really makes you, like, feel like, no, there is something special about what I'm doing. And um, it just makes, <laughs> sometimes the imposter syndrome takes over. So it eliminates that and, and it's it, it becomes inspiring. Crapple Juice, hell yeah. What's the first musical artist or band that you ever really loved? <laughs> um, well, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, <laughs> bless his heart. Michael Jackson, you know, when I was a young man, he was all over the place. And, uh, you know, uh, my parents were really into Michael Jackson. We had Michael Jackson music. I think I was like first becoming sentient when Michael Jackson's Dangerous album was on the radio and everybody really cared about that and um, the music videos and the dancing and everything, um, he was just so ubiquitous and it seemed like everybody was on the same page when it came to Michael Jackson. So that was like the first thing that I felt like I was really like crazy about you know I would try to do the dance moves there's a lot of videos of me and, and my family where I'm trying to do the dance moves really bad I pretty much do those same dance moves today um, it's just really me gesticulating violently it's about as dance is about as um what do you call it um, groovy as I can get handheld vacuum lover are these their real names that's incredible What's your process in figuring out the visuals for your live show? All right, I guess I'm gonna spill the secrets right now. Uh, I have, uh, if, if you are watching the live show, which I'm assuming that you did, uh, there's like this, 
moving light bright behind me the whole time. And that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, you know, you go to Coachella and you have the Coachella Tron or whatever, and it's just like, it's basically like that, except so dense that it looks like a television screen and you can't tell any difference. So my thing, it's about 10 centimeters apart each dot. And um, so it doesn't look like a TV screen. You wouldn't mistake it for a TV, but you can get a message across with it. It looks like, a, you know, a, a very low, uh, low fidelity, uh, you know, light bright, if you know what a light bright is. And, and anyway, so I think about, well, what can I portray? What, you know, sometimes it's abstract. It's usually like shapes uh, and sometimes logos, uh, sometimes text. And um, basically, like, <laughs> what can you get across in, you know, like an icon-sized uh, definition? So I make a video out of stuff that I think will come across, and then I convert it into this LED language using a proprietary LED software that people use to, like, make your... If you ever drive by a school and it's like, Thanksgiving break, here's where it is. Like, it's the same software that creates that. I just rig it up to do a video, and then um, I trigger that at the same time as my music, and it syncs up really well. So it's kind of just like making a, a music video, and I guess what's the process in figuring out the visuals? <sighs> you know, it's harder than you would think to come up, uh, to come up with an hour and, and 15 minutes worth of unique content that is like, 30 pixels wide. So um, I just trial and error, and I kind of have a theme with my visuals at this point. There's a lot of uh, Illuminati symbolism and stuff that like just confuses people. So whatever's confusing, and then also like um, Sonic the Hedgehog. So, uh, you know, if it's in that realm, that's my process. I just cut them together and make it. You know, sometimes a song sounds more green, sometimes a song sounds more blue, and I just, that's how I decide. But thank you for giving me an opportunity to let everyone out there know that I'm doing all the visuals myself. Yes, I believe in ghosts. I have a ghost story. I can tell, I have two or three ghost stories. I'll tell the quickest one first. When I was a little boy, I was playing in my, in my room and um, all of a sudden, I was so little, I was probably like four or something. I was so little. This is one of my oldest memories. I was so little that I thought that my brother, because he's three and a half years older than me, had like the power to like do anything. I didn't understand his life because I was such a little stupid baby. So I thought your older brother, oh, he can do, he can like shoot a basketball. Like what's going on here? He's eight years old. He can shoot a basketball into the toddler ring and make it. And I can't even not crap my, he can wipe his own butt you know so he seemed like he had superpowers to me so I just assumed that he could like control my mind so I blamed my brother for this for like a, a year or so before I realized that it was ghosts but I had a uh, a thought that was just I was just playing in my room and then all of a sudden I was co super compelled to go um uh, my brain was like go and get the yellow book where the cats are firemen Go find the giant yellow book where the cats are firemen and they put out the fire. Go pull it off of your bookshelf and push it under the gap under your door and it's going to come back to you. And then I was like, that's crazy. But I was so compelled to do it. So I went and I got it and I pushed this book under my door. I let go. I waited a second and then it came back. I was scared to death. I opened my door and I run down the stairs and I scream at my brother who's wearing like pajamas and watching Wheel of Fortune and my parents get mad at me because I'm screaming at him for no reason. But I thought that he was trying to scare me and program my brain and then push the thing back and then disappeared. But turns out it's ghosts. Okay. Bratza says, how long did it take you to become disciplined in making music? I don't know. It's an ongoing process. Um, sometimes it's difficult to set aside the time that you need to put it all together uh, or you just get down on yourself. So become disciplined in making music. I mean, I've been trying to make music, you know, ever since I was in elementary school. Um, I never really got into lessons. I, my parents were nice enough to like 
make sacrifices to like get me lessons in piano, but then I wouldn't practice and then guitar, but then I wouldn't practice. I did like band in middle school and everything. Um, but mostly I just taught myself enough to, to put like songs together and I tried to get better a little bit, but then I discovered the Brian Jonestown massacre and realized, Oh, I can play every single one of these songs with the most rudimentary knowledge. And it's like the best music I've ever heard. So, I uh, I realized that it's all in how you put the song together, and um, is that answering the question? I don't know. How long did it take you to film? I don't know. My whole life. <laughs> thank you very much, Bratza, and thanks everybody for um, you know watching, and uh, thank you to the Bowery Presents for giving me this opportunity. I think it's been a lot of fun, and you know. You can just take one look at my sunglasses and you can tell that I'm pretentious and I love to be on TV. So thank you so much, Twitch, for giving me the opportunity. And good night. I love you.